Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost and I help people unlock the full potential of Airtable. In this video, I'm going to be walking through how to build a Zapier integration into Airtable. Now, Zapier is a service that allows you to uh, link multiple apps uh, so that they talk to one another. So in this example, we are going to take information that's entered into Calendly and automatically create new records with that information in our Airtable CRM. So if you haven't used Calendly before, Calendly is uh, an app online that allows people to essentially schedule time on your calendar. And so with a new prospect in, for your business entering their information into Calendly, you would normally have to manually enter that information into a CRM that might be in Airtable. Uh, in this case, we're going to take that step out of it and we're going to build this Zapier integration so that that information from Calendly is automatically sent to Airtable and our CRM is automatically updated. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. All right, so to get things started, we have to integrate two softwares using Zapier. So including Zapier, we're going to be using three different windows here. So first we have our Calendly window. And so we have an event created. And the part where you'll want to give particular attention for this example would be in the invitee questions. So the name and the email address, these are default for any Calendly invitation, but you can then ask for uh, custom questions for your particular prospects or audience. In this case, um, I prefer to use my, or I prefer to do my uh, initial consultation calls using Skype. So I want that Skype username. I also would like to have a phone number in case Skype connection uh, breaks and uh, you know, we wanna continue that call. Also, I would recommend including a bit of a monthly, or excuse me, a bit of a qualifying question. So in this case, I use monthly revenue. I just wanna get an idea how big this uh, business is and what their specific needs might be. And that uh, takes us to the last question there, which is really, is there anything else? Uh, and very often, you know, prospects and clients will fill this out with just a little bit of a brain dump, which is great because it gives me the opportunity to prepare a bit more for that consultation. So that is, uh, those are the questions, and I would go ahead and you know, write those in a particular, uh, whatever, in a way that is particularly beneficial for you and your business. So then the next part is, well, what does the CRM that we build look like? And so this is just a, a one table example, and you'll see that we have the same fields that we just went over. So I've built this to include the name of the person, that's going to be the identifier for the client. And then uh, we want to have their email, we want to, we want to have their Skype, their phone number, etc. So what we're trying to do is bring all that information from Calendly and just put it into this database, right? And so uh, the first thing we want to do is set up a, uh, an example um, for us to pull through uh, to use when we're setting up our integration. And I'll show you why we do this in a moment. But what we do is we go to the actual place on Calendly where we would, uh, so where someone would schedule this appointment and we just schedule a fake appointment. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll just put in a, a fake name here. And uh, we'll go ahead and, you know, just fill all of this out. Um, and we schedule the event. Great. So that's, that's it. Now the event has been scheduled. And if we were to look back on our Calendly, we would uh, find this on our dashboard. So going into Zapier, what we're going to do is create this uh, Zap. Now we start from the dashboard and let me just trash this and we'll start from scratch. So we can create a zap by pushing this make a zap button or down here, either way, same thing. And we're going to first have to establish a trigger. Now a trigger is the action that happens in that makes us set off the, uh, the integration. So in this case, when someone schedules something in Calendly, we want something to happen in Airtable, right? So we can select Calendly. If yours doesn't show up here, 
uh, you can just type it in and find it from the list. And we want to, and this is very straightforward, but just you know, figure out which of these two things is the action that you want to be the trigger. In this case, invitee created. And so you'll see here I've obviously linked Calendly to my Zapier before. If you have not done this, I'll walk you through the steps. You go down to connect an account, and you'll see that this, uh, this pops up here, which is, uh, this is asking you for the API key, which is a unique identifier that's going to link Zapier and give it access to your Calendly account. So in order to find that, come up to your uh, particular account and find integrations. When you click on this, you'll have an API key here. Don't share this with anyone. This is very personal for your business. And go ahead and drop that API key in here. Once that's done, you'll see that a new connection has been established and it should have your Calendly information here. You can test that and make sure that it's successfully connected. Great. So we're going to save and continue. Now we've connected Calendly to Zapier and we're going to fetch the uh, record to use as an example. Now this is why we created a fake uh, example earlier. We're going to view that invitee and here is the information that you saw me enter on the screen earlier. Gareth fake, nothing I can think of, a fake phone number here, uh, etc, etc, right? So this is the information we're looking for. Great, we're going to continue. And now we're going to tell, we're going to set this up so that it pushes into Airtable. So we're going to link this with Airtable, but again, uh, if you want to, if you, it doesn't show up for you, just begin typing it and find it from the list. And what do you want to have happen when this occurs? Well, we want to create a new record. Do we want to update a record or do we want to find a record? Actually, in this case, finding a record is the preferred solution because what it will do is search Airtable and it will say, if we find the record, then we'll update it. And if we don't find the record, we'll create a new record. So that's what we want to do. And it does, it does spell that out here uh, in this information. So we're going to select that here and we're going to connect that account. Similarly, uh, you know, obviously I already have my Airtable uh, linked, but if we wanted to, or if you needed to do this for the first time, you would go to your account settings in Airtable and you'll find your API key right here. Again, this is very private information. Don't share it with anyone uh, that's not a part of your company. And you're gonna go ahead and connect to that account uh, just like you did the last time. It's super easy. Just paste that API key in and continue. And once that's done, there you go. Test it and we have success. So great, we're gonna save that. And now here, what are the options? So it's going to link to all of the different bases within our Airtable. So we need to find that uh, the particular base that we want this information to go into, which for us will be CRM example. Now it's gonna ask what table we want. Well, for this uh, CRM example, there is only one table. It's a very simple base. We select that table. Now it's saying search field. What's the search field? Well, it wants to know what it is looking for. And so it's going to be using name from Calendly and we want to check to find, does that name already exist in our CRM? So we select name and then search value. What's the value? This is uh, that invitee uh, created name. So you'll see that this links back to Calendly. All right. So again, what that's doing is saying we're looking for the invitee name search value. We're looking for this in this field. And if it exists, what are we going to do? And if it doesn't, what are we going to do? So that is all you need for this uh, example. We're not going to get any, we're not going to get any crazier for right now. Uh, no, none of the more advanced things. And so what we're telling it to do is, hey, if that record does not exist in Airtable, I want you to create a new one. I want that information. So we select this, create a new record, and you'll see everything is still the same. And now how do we want to set up that record? And this is where it gets good. We're going to pull in the name. So obviously the invitee name is what we're looking for here. And 
what are we pulling into the phone number? Obviously, we're looking for phone number. If we can't find it, we can just start typing. Or can we? Let's find that phone number. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. So that was a, a unique uh, question that we built, and so it's showing up under questions and responses to. Uh, what's the email? The email that we used was, was what? There's our email. So all we're doing is going through and we're using the information that we put in that, uh, in that uh, fake one that we created and we're just, we're just linking it and telling it which is which. So the Skype username, similarly, I forget, oh, it was Gareth Fake. And uh, is there anything else that was down here somewhere? There we go, nothing I can think of, wow. All right, so we found that, and uh, current status is not something we're pulling in. So we just wanna make sure that we pulled in all of the relevant data. We have a name, we have a phone number, we have an email here, we have monthly revenue, we have a Skype username, and uh, is there anything else? Great. Go ahead and continue. It says there's an unfinished step in the zap. Let's take a look, fetch and continue. I think we got it all. Yeah, test is successful. So let's go ahead and finish, and now we're gonna test our zap ourselves. So you can give this uh, zap a name. So we'll call this uh, Calendly to Airtable. And it's, let's turn it on. Cool, it's that simple, folks. I mean, that was, what, 10, 12 minutes? So coming in to uh, test it now, let's, let's take a look. We're gonna go back into our uh, CRM, and sure enough, it pulled in that information. It gave us an email, Gareth Fake for the uh, Skype name, et cetera. So this looks pretty good, uh, and it dropped it into record two, so it looks like we don't need record one. Now, we're gonna jump into Calendly again, and let's head on over to those event types, and we'll go ahead and create uh, a copy link here and bring that up and we can fill out new information and just check that that all pulls through into our CRM. That would be the final step to go ahead and create more uh, fake Calendly uh, uh, in appointments just to make sure it all fills out. And uh, once, you've, once you've verified that it's working, it's now gonna automatically pull all that information in for you all the time. All right, well, as always, I hope you found that to be very useful. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.